Hi there. We're starting a new series on the uh, operations during the um, conflict years in South Africa. And um, there were quite a few uh, books written uh, by guys who took part, uh, particularly in the special forces operations. Um, but we'll also be looking at the police as well as the military. Uh, so we'll try and cover uh, a wide spectrum of it. So um, it's quite often called the, the Bush War, but it also had urban components as well. Um, and the first book is uh, quite a blockbuster, and it's this one, Silent War by Peter Stiff. Now, Peter Stiff has specialised in books on um, Southern Africa. He was a Rhodesian. Uh, he was a member of the British South African Police, the Rhodesian Police. He moved down to South Africa and he started a, a publishing house down there and uh, published lots and lots of books, some of which we will uh, be reviewing. The book is really the history of the uh, Reckies, the Reconnaissance Commando. And it starts off really with uh, Jan Breitenbach who had served in uh, the British Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm during World War II, gone back to um, South Africa and ended up joining the airborne forces down there, which are commonly called the Paravats. And he um, was very, very struck with um, the success of small units operations, and he lobbied for the creation of an SAS type unit within the South African military. And uh, he received support to take a group of 12 of the Parabats da uh, up to Rhodesia to um, undergo training with C Squadron SAS there, uh, which culminated in um, the selection program and then the follow on training for that. And uh, most of the guys passed and came back but unfortunately um, the senior command in the South African military um, as so often happens and as happen as did happen in other armies um, had a conventional mindset and didn't want a special force unit and it was sometime later only when General Lewis um, uh, took over that uh, Breitenbach was able to pursue this and they brought in Dudley Coventry from uh, Rhodesia from the SAS there and he uh, became a consultant for a while and um, they set up a training program and it was Breitenbach wanted it to be called the Para Commando but it was called the uh, Reconnaissance Commando or, or the Recce and the, the reason for that was it was a little bit more of a generic term that people wouldn't really know what they were they were up to um, it was comprised of two wings, um, an airborne wing, par parachute trained, which was no problem because most of the guys were coming from Parabats, uh, but also a maritime wing, which would be in uh, diving and small boat operations. So they sent guys down to Simmonstown Naval Base in the Cape. They went, went through the uh, diver training there. And then uh, a group of them went out to France to Ajaccio uh, where they did the French attack diver course and the French were actually um, pioneers in this kind of, um, of this area of operations. So uh, operations in Angola and in uh, what was then Southwest Africa later Namibia um, sometimes the recce's weren't used in a proper special force they were more used in what would over here be the the paras but they were used and so they got operational experience um the uh one recce uh, be, became uh they started having different branches and one recce moved to Devon uh, to the bluff and that became their headquarters and um a citizen force or um what would be in, in the UK territorial force 
uh, reservists uh, was set up. That was two recce that was based up in the Transvaal. And um, they also uh, went operational, but they had a, a somewhat of a di different role. Um, the book covers operations in Rhodesia, where the recce uh, operated as um, D squadron of um, of the Rhodesian SAS. There's a big section on selection, and it's a very very interesting select uh, section. Um, because it kind of reflects um, the experience of other other special force units. Um, when um, the British SAS started doing selection, because originally they, they didn't really they they were they used the jungle as their selection, but um, uh, John Woodhouse um, came back to the UK and. He set up a recruiting and selection cadre um, based in Wales and together with some of the other experienced guys from the, uh, the NCOs, they created a selection program and it, it was, it's the model for all subsequent special forces selection that have a, an SAS lineage, um, which includes Delta in, in the United States. and. Um, uh, Woodhouse was ill and he um, when he recovered uh, it was malaria and when he recovered he submitted himself for selection and passed and the idea was that the, the unit the selection would be the, the entrance into the unit you wouldn't become um, uh, badged within SAS unless you'd done the selection and back then selection pro program was very very basic a couple of four ton trucks and the back of a fag packet basically they took the guys and more or less they were full on into what, what is now known as test week the series of, of grueling marches leading up to endurance over the years they changed and they added it and lengthened it and added more facets to it give the guys more of an introduction south africans did the same their, their selection was very grueling based on the um, rhodesian model and they were losing a lot of guys, so they got their heads together and they came up with um, a three-part model. Um, the physical being, the intellectual being, and the psychological slash emotional being. Each set was addressed by a retrospective study of serving operators. What characteristics did they have? What did they look like? What made them tick? And they did a a sorting out thing by using um, side X assessments and also um, a physiological metric training on, on various machines. And um, they um, then they went into the other models, the, the um, psychological and so on. And what everyone found out, uh, the British SAS, Delta and the South Africans, um, is that the pass rate remained more or less constant. Eight to ten percent <clears throat> of the guys that attempt selection pass, no matter if it's a couple of three ton, uh, four ton trucks um, and the guys are straight into it or if they've got a, a build up and a and an uh, introduction and um, um, pre-selection phase training, whatever, it remains constant. So uh, it's a very, very interesting thing. No matter how they try to adjust it, you still get um, the same percentage in. So uh, there's quite a bit of information on that study, how they did it. And um, they screened out guys and they said, you'll never, ever pass. A lot of the guys who make their way into um, in, into special force units do so against fantastic odds. And sometimes they seem to be the unlikely um, characters. Um, so uh, there's lessons to be learned there. Um, goes into, um, after the uh, Rhodesia became Zimbabwe, uh, a lot of the special force guys went down south and um, six recce was formed 
which uh, was co-located with um, one wreck here at the, the, uh, the bluff and they did um, one big major operation cross-border operation it's all in the book and uh, also um, uh, what was originally three uh, recce commando then seven recce commando um, but then it just became absorbed into five recce was uh, the, uh, um, uh, an element from the Sulu scouts um, white operators and also black operators came down um, the Reckies had had a look at the Sulu scouts um, gone through some of the some of the um, training in Rhodesia and um, were eager to um, to have a pseudo role and that became part of five recce uh, and one of the subunits of five recce still has the uh, the um, the, the uh, Sulu scouts osprey wings and um, okay so <clears throat> then after uh, 94 the new government uh, when the ANC uh, won the election um, Ronnie Casrells was Minister of Defence and um, he turned around and said where's my special forces because they were obviously aware that, that they had these special forces because they'd been so successful against them and they'd been hidden in the airborne brigades uh, 451, 452, 453 um, uh, regiments. And uh, they were reformed as special forces. Uh, one and two um, were um, disbanded. One recce was disbanded from the bluff and two recce, the citizen force was disbanded. And uh, four recce, which was the maritime unit, uh, out at Langabalan uh, was retained and also five recce of Palabora was retained uh, to this day. Um, Peter Stiff had access to a lot of information and I think that the uh, powers that be actually regretted giving him so much access because so much information came out. Um, there's a lot of other topics in the book but uh, they will no doubt be addressed in other books on the subject, both by Peter Stiff and by others. Um, anybody interested in, in special forces in general uh, and Southern African Britannia will find it a very, very informative read.